The First Sea Lord Admiral Sir Mark Stanhope says it's been an extremely busy year for the Royal Navy. Speaking aboard HMS Illustrious, a ship he once commanded, he told Claire Sadler about the Navy's worldwide commitments. Well, as you'd expect and hope, the Royal Navy's been actually uh, very, very busy, with about 70% of all available warships being deployed, with uh, on average uh, over 4,000, but at times uh, more than 6,500 personnel deployed or preparing to, uh, to, to deploy. This has been yet again uh, a busy year for, for the Navy. Starting in Afghanistan, of course, we've had uh, some uh, 1,000 personnel deployed and over the Christmas period we've got 40 commander there as well, which increases the numbers uh, quite significantly. Um, we've been deployed to the South Atlantic, to the Caribbean, to the Mediterranean, where only recently the return of the RFTG uh, meant they had spent two months uh, preparing themselves for the readiness profile that they have to maintain. We've, of course, continued our significant commitment to the Gulf region with four nine countermeasures vessels, two frigates or, de or, de or destroyers throughout the year, a nuclear power submarine, a Royal Fleet aux Auxiliary. It's a significant commitment to ensure the security of that region. That, that doesn't, of course, uh, forget the 43 years now of continuous at-sea deterrence, uh, which I think is a major achievement and a significant uh, piece of our business. And with the Queen's Diamond Jubilee and with the Olympics, it's been an equally busy year closer to home, hasn't it? It has been hugely busy uh, for, for the Navy. Before I jump to the Olympics and the Diamond Jubilee, I have to mention the permanent presence of the Royal Navy around the United Kingdom, fronted often by our fishery protection task, but indeed supported by frigates and submarines ready and available to do the nation's business should it be called to do so. But the Olympics, uh, massive involvement of the armed services, probably the greatest involvement since World War II, fronted in by the Navy in marines and sailors uh, uh, being part of the security requirements for the venues themselves, and more publicly, of course, HMS Ocean on, on the Thames, uh, providing security to, if you like, the river flank of the um, uh, main venue, uh, and HMS Bulwark uh, off Weymouth, providing the command and control and security aspects for the delivery of the sailing events themselves. A very, very busy time. And operations, wherever they are, don't stop over the festive period, do they? So how will those sailors or marines who are on duty or at sea be enjoying the festive period? I would very much hope that uh, those sailors and marines are, de are deployed, have the opportunity uh, with the appropriate connectivity to, to talk to their families sometime over the, 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 the festive period. I hope they have a time, time during Christmas and Boxing Day themselves to be able to sit down together uh, with their chums and their oppos uh, to celebrate the, the, the event itself and open those presents that have got to them through tortuous routes, I suspect, uh, be they in the Gulf or in Afghanistan. And how do you personally remember Christmas at sea? Um, in the length of time I spent in the, in the Navy, I spent a number of Christmases away from home. Not always at sea. Uh, I remember distinctly a, 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 a Christmas day in the Ministry of Defence, which is probably better forgotten. Um, but uh, uh, when I was in command of HMS Orpheus, we spent Christmas down in the Falkland Islands where we had a, had a very traditional Christmas at anchor uh, off one of the islands them, the, themselves where the wardroom served Christmas lunch uh, festively to the rest of the ship's company uh, before they sat, uh, sat down themselves. I've had a number of very close shaves. I've, as a submariner, I've never spent Christmas underwater, but I got very, very close to it on a number of occasions. And as we now look ahead to next year, what are your priorities? I think the first priority is to make sure that the Navy is able to deliver the operational requirements that are placed upon it. I anticipate 2013 being another busy year for the armed services in general and the Navy in particular, with a particular focus on, of course, our main effort in Afghanistan, but equally importantly and rising in profile our security of the Gulf region itself and the Straits of Horm Hormuz. With that operational commitment being primacy, I would hope that we can deal with some of the challenges associated with the tempo of operations across the Navy, which are very demanding, and I would like to see, and we are working on, seeing how we can detune some of that uh, in a way that is good for our, for, for our people.